Thank you very much. <laughs> I, like hmm. I am right. recording, so Duke, whenever right. you want to start. All right. Welcome back to the Insights Podcast presented by Vantage Pro. I am Duke, way on the other side. Haha, <laughs> see, I still got it. Van? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know it's backwards. I know. It's really it's hard. <laughs> um, but the guy in the middle, in between, in the blue with the guitars and all the amazing history, uh, if you got a chance to check out our last podcast, Mr. Dave Hatmaker, we're excited to have you back. Good to be here, everybody. And, uh, you uh, you, you are doing a little bit of everything these days, um, helping people be amazing, making some music, and uh, teaching some uh, seminars based off of uh, your hard-earned wisdom over the years, um, and uh, we we wanted to do a podcast based on one of those. Uh, there's no I in team, but there should be you. That's right. I like it. I need you. We need you. Whoever your employer is needs you because you become the asset. You're a you're you are valuable to the team. We can't do it without you. We as the employers or we as the techs, technicians, pastors, worship pastors, we can't do it without you. It has to be a team. I thought it was a kind of clever way we've all heard. There's no I in team. We have to build a team, 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 team. And it hit me like, well, I need you. <laughs> I've got to have a you. I can't be 20 me's. I need a you. And let's build the team. You know, and I'm, I watch a lot of basketball now. And, uh, you know, it's not just the starting five or the three stars. You know, I got to have five other people to come off the bench. And I've got to have people in training. And I've got to have coaches. And I've got to have a front mm -hmm. office staff. And I've got to have money. And, you know, all those things matter. And so when you're building the team, you need to be a part of the team. Hence, I need you, right? So I, I thought it was a clever brain way to discuss it and, and have a, a cool title that maybe somebody will go and click on or have me out yeah. to do a speaking engagement. Well, no, I think it, and the, oh, go ahead, Dick. I was just going to say, I think it's legit. I think, you know, we came up with this whole, you know, there's no I in team thing when, uh, when somebody gets a little arrogant or somebody gets a little cocky, which is, it happens it's in the church true. as well. Yep. Um, and so, you know, that phraseology, but at the same time, I think sometimes what does get lost. Um, and I know with, um, I, I've had this conversation with a number of, of lead pastors or executive pastors who are like, yeah, I don't know what to do with these production people. Like they're in their own little world. I don't know how they work. I don't know how to help them be better. Um, and so I, I like the concept of this because the reality is, is, is for any role in the church, we do need everybody to actually be the best versions of themselves as possible, um, prefer, preferably a, a, a version that has some humility to them. But we do need them to be the best version, the best capable as possible. Otherwise, we're actually holding our ministries back. Right. And I don't want to give up like everything in the presentation, but it's, you know, I, I like to think of like this, I can see myself here through this camera looking back at me and I've got to figure out what wakes me up in the morning and what my mission statement is and what, what, why do I do what I do? Why, why do we do, why are we in this business or and it doesn't even have to be this business, but whatever business you're in. Why do you do that? What are you good at it? Did you did you inherit into it? Or are you what you know, I think once you figure out the why, do you do what you do, do being the action verb of why do you do something? Um, write that down and let that be kind of a mission statement for you. Everyone's gonna have a different one, everyone's gonna have a different reason of of why that is. I can't find that for you, but if you keep looking at yourself kind of from the outside in um my mission statement is i want to make the audio world a better place one day at a time and i've thought about that for a long time even while i was at yamaha is try to make speakers a little easier for the musician or make a console that's a little easier to get your job done because ultimately and this is going to sound funny um i'd love you to get if you're doing a show, I would like for you, the engineer, to get to the catering line before the lighting guys, right? So that it's just an easier way 
that we've got like the sound check we're all good is it good is we're good good where's the you know where's the food because <laughs> buddy of mine john shower and i were talking about like oh we we the audio team make it to the taco bar and there's never any meat left right we're like into the chicken or we're into the dregs of the pan or whatever and like sh showing up at the at the the front of the food line and go wait there's beef and chicken like you know that's a i i i laugh but that's you know be be better at your craft so you can get to the food line faster i don't know it's right. kind of a <laughs> crazy idea but you know yeah yeah self preservation be, be more efficient Hey, it's Van. I'm just going to jump in here for a quick second and ask you that if you like this content, please leave a thumbs up. Please subscribe, click that notification bell, and share this out on the socials if you can. And one more thing, leave a comment. We absolutely read them and we will respond to them. All right, back to the podcast. Well, and I think, you know, when when we hear pastors go, I don't know how to help my, you know, tech director, sound engineer, lighting director, whatever, whatever it is in the, in the church. I think, I mean, yes, the people that hire you should be trying to help you to be better, but you have to make yourself better. You have to be a self-starter. You have to go, if I want to do this craft and I love doing this and you have your mission statement in your mind, however you work that out. I think most of us that have done this for a long time have that in the back of our head, why we do it. Um, you need to make yourself better. You need to be a learner. You need to be somebody who gets out there and figures stuff out and, and, and talks to, you know, we were talking, Dave and I were talking the other night and I said, you know, one of the things my dad always said is have a Rolodex for all you young people. That's your, uh, contacts, in contacts. Your phone. uh, <laughs> but have a Rolodex with a lot of smart people in it that are willing to take your phone call. And you know, the bottom line is you need to, even if you're an introvert, which most technical people are somewhat, you need to get out of your comfort zone and start meeting people that are smarter than you are that will help you learn and then be a learner to become. Because what we were talking about is to be become the guy, quote unquote, with your girl or guy, you become the guy, the one, the, the people, the one that people call. Um, and I think that, you know, even all of us who've been doing this many, many years, we all still have that person. There's another person smarter than us that we go, oh, right. I got to call that guy. I mean, a lot for me, sometimes it's Dave. <laughs> I got to call Dave, you know, but we, I have a whole, I have a whole list of people that go, I don't know how to do that. Or that doesn't make any sense to me. Let me call that person. Cause I know they're going right. to be able to, you know, but you have to get there and that helps you rise up as you get, as you're, as they're helping you get smarter, you're, becoming more valuable. And I think it's, I think in the, in the case of the pastor, not knowing how to deal with their tech team, somebody should, I don't know if it's a, if they even have the thought of a CTO, a chief technology officer or something, but as long as everybody gets the vision of what the mission statement is, that should be derived by the, the pastor or the, the, um, the board, um, everything should build on that children's ministry should build on that the parking lot team should build on that the the financial part of the corporation the church should have should everybody should queue up to that same mission statement and then it's just easier to go i as the tech am going to put imag on a screen and we're going to hear him and we're going to live stream or not or you know are you are you are you trying to grow the church? Are you trying to keep your flock in, you know, keep all the members of your flock intact? I mean, there's many styles of churches and, and no one church is, is like another. So um, that mission statement should drive everything from the pastor talking and it should all lead up to the pastor talking. It should be the, the, from the, I say from the parking lot to the sermon. So how are how are the cars getting parked to dropping off your kids in the childcare, to coming into the sanctuary, to some music, to leading you up to now I'm distraction free and I'm ready to listen to the word of God being spoken. Right. That's that's a that's a leadership role and everything else should drive into that. And it really does sieve out a lot of things. Should we do this or this? Does it, 
does it manifest itself into making the word of God heard easier, better? If it doesn't, then that's fluff. And, you know, maybe if we get some dough next year, we'll do that, whatever. But that's from the, from the parking lot to the sermon is, is, um, that's what it should be distraction free. Well, yeah. I think a way to get there, you know, kind of what we were talking about is if you're the person, if you're the tech director, production manager, if you're the sound engineer is, is the lead tech, you know, I think becoming a person that is the person that, you know, like, like we said before, you want the pastor to look in the back and see you and go, okay, everything's going to be fine. Everything's okay. cool. They're back there. They're handling it. Some weird's happening. But they're going to take care of it to get to that point. Does not, uh, I don't think it means I know everything about the waves plugin. <laughs> it means like you have to know stuff on a higher level, you know, you, you got to be, to be that person you have to be, there's a lot more that has to happen, you know, and I'd love for you to talk about like work ethic, showing up on time, all those things. Like what, when you, so, you know, you were at Disneyland for how many years? Almost 20. Yeah. 19 to change. And you were a technical director and you uh -huh. hired a lot and I'm sure fired too. You hired a lot of technicians, <laughs> right? that applies to me to being a technician in church. It's the same. You're, you're right. Those are similar right. tasks. So what, like, what, what do you look for in young people and what, so what, like, what are your, what are your, what's like your philosophy on that? Uh, what, what are you looking for? Yeah, I'm looking for a lot of times I'm looking for, and, and you can find that you can even find this in an introvert, but I'm looking for a, motivated self-starter, I think is like kind of the biggest one. <clears throat> and somebody that can know, <clears throat> sorry, I got to mute just for one second. Hang on. I'm going to be right back. I want somebody that I don't have to tell over and over again to do the same task, right? So I'm going to train somebody and they're going to train with me or they're going to learn this. And maybe that takes a week or two or three. And then that's the baseline. That's, that's where they're going to run from now on and then learn from there. Right. So every day learn something new or, you know, try to get better every day. And that, that person can't be arrogant and they can't, be a lot of self and there's a lot of things to kind of wade through that being being confident is not being arrogant right there's an air to being confident and knowing my gear and knowing my task and knowing what i do rather than i know everything about everything about everything with everything right so there's a there's a confidence that comes without being arrogant. <clears throat> and I can usually spot that pretty good in an interview. And, and maybe there's the right place for that person. But in my first pass, that person's going to get sieved out. So I want some humility in there with the confidence. I want them to be able to um, know the craft of what it is, audio, lighting, um, uh, being a marketing person when I would interview people at Yamaha also, um, vice presidents, you want a uh, confident leadership. You want them to be, um, uh, it, it goes back to the motivated self-starter. I, I, that's, I think that's my, my biggest one is because the motivated self-starter is not going to wait till Sunday morning at seven 30, to fix this problem or do this something task that needed to be done with the pastor. That's a not Sunday afternoon. That's a start fresh on Monday or you have Monday, Tuesday off. It's Wednesday. Let's, let's fix that on Wednesday. And oh, then you, let's you, you don't, up, you don't update the console on Sunday no, morning. No, no, no. <laughs> 
<laughs> and in fact, that may be overtime on Monday when you update the console. <laughs> I'm going to just be honest. Or you, on those days, you defer your days off to Thursday, Friday, maybe, or whatever. Yes, you don't update the console on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Right. That's yeah. when you don't. And when you see a notification that says you should, no, you got to hide that. Wait till Monday. <laughs> don't wait till Monday. But a motivated self starter would kind of figure that out because they're going to want to not be fired. And Van yeah. got to see the presentation of kind of your your biggest deal is to don't get fired. Well, so yeah. I mean, that's, in that yeah. and. And, you know, we talk about technology, we talk about interviews, and we talk about how to be like the guy. And um, um, I'm going to look at the camera for one second and go, this helps more than almost anything. So whether it's the artist or the pastor, and you're standing back at front of house, and the pastor walks up on stage, or the worship leader walks up on stage, is not the time for you to be like, Are you know, going, right? yeah. this, if I'm standing or sitting and I have my finger on the fader and I'm watching, oh, Van's our, our, our speaker for tonight. Van walks up and he looks at front of house and he sees eyes glaring back at him and I pot him up and he's talking. Great. We're distraction free. And he has a, he starts talking and maybe it's a little louder. It's not loud enough. Or I make a quick adjustment and in eight, nine, five seconds, He's off to the races and then we're going. But this is huge. And I do a ton of corporate events now and bands and I won't mention them. And you go to my website and you can see whatever. But when the lead artist is walking up on stage or 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 the CEO is walking up on stage and I absolutely make the point of being ready, motivated, self-starter. My hand is on the fader. I'm, maybe I'm on headset and they say, ladies and gentlemen, so-and-so, and I'm there and I look up at him for confidence and he starts talking and we have an eye moment and we thing, and then he's onto the prompter and when we're off to the races. But if, <clears throat> if I'm like this, you know, and the CEO from Ford comes up and he sees this, that it's pretty terrible. That should go without saying, by the way, that should just not be anything that we're even having a discussion about, but I'm telling you the, what I see in here from the CEO telling me, oh, it's so nice that I look back and I, I see you looking at me. Right. Because yeah. <laughs> you're it, man. This is, the, this is the whole meat and potatoes, you know. Well, even in the hiring process, you know, I, introverts have a problem with this, but especially in the younger generations. But when you're talking to somebody in an interview, they should be looking at you like we should be right. eye contact. You should not right. be like over here, like, at the, you know. Right like looking down because you're embarrassed or you're self-conscious or something, you have to get out of that and you have to go, I got to look, I've got to look this person in the eye. Right. And it was, it was popular pre pandemic, but it's probably actually more needed now post pandemic is, um, an interview coach or, or doing a mock interview because I can, I, we can have a mock interview. We can record it. We can even do it on zoom, but we can do it live if, if you'd like. Um, but we can record it and then we can kind of take it apart and I can coach you through, did you see what you did there? And not to make it all pre-planned because it shouldn't, it should have an organic feel, but there's the five minutes of that you should probably get pretty easy. Here's how to shake hands. Here's what to wear. Here's how to look at them. You know, you're uh, not going to look hands. at them the whole time unless you're a genius marketing guy. I don't, you can see me looking around. I'm not distracted, but it's just the way that I'm built. Right. So right. I, as the interviewer, I can see that. But again, this, I think we get into this a lot. You know, we've got a posture and, and how to look and behave and forward face and, and chest forward. And, you know, those are, I think those are coaching opportunities in interviews. Um, now we've gone a little astray out of, out of what makes you be the guy, but I think that confidence well, is, um, I think that's part of it. That's part of it. Cause, cause being the, being the, the one that everybody wants to call that starts at some, that starts like it, in your first meeting with them sometimes. Right. It'd be like, Oh, I really, you know, I jokingly said to Dave the other night, I said, 
I'm really a pretty mediocre sound engineer, but people like working with me. So that's why I get hired. <laughs> and so there's a, there's a, there's a whole, like, you know, I mean, people can argue whether I'm a great sound engineer or not, but I mean, I like people like to work with me and that's why I've always been able to be employed in this business because people like me because people like hanging with me. They like being with me. They like how I take care of them when we're doing an event, how I'm proactive, how I'm talking to them about stuff that they haven't even thought of yet all those things, you know, that is just inherent, was driven into me by mentors of mine early on. Um, I think that's another thing just to have mentors. Uh, Cause I think that, yeah. the, don't you feel like this has made everybody isolated, has isolated right. people to, especially young people to where they don't, right. you know. Right. I'll let you guys in on a, on a secret of, marketing and, and and if you've studied marketing it's not a secret at all but there's um marketing personas which will drive products and it's easier for a guy say they're a they're a tech doing code development in germany if that guy knows when i build sorry i'm going to grab anything if i build this <clears throat> this is based on years of looking at how people <clears throat> do their thumbs or whatever. And these personas get written of here's who's going to buy this remote control, um, a housewife. And we're going to put not just a housewife, we're going to put Betty could and Betty could is 55 years old and she lives in Des Moines and she watches a lot of Hallmark, um, movies. Whatever. So now we can get down to the point where we're 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 taking a thousand people and we're putting them to one name. Betty could Betty could use a remote control. Right. So that happens all the time for interviewers, by the way, because HR has seen 10,000 of you and they put you in a category. And when you come in and they're like looking at you, oh, he's the green shirt guy and he wears he wears polo shirts or whatever. What we want to do is we want to get you to where you're outside of just a downright persona. I'm a tech. I press buttons. I get paid a lot of money. That's what everyone thinks. I'm a tech. I wear black. I, I do video IMAG and I'm a camera guy and I work in TV in LA. Well, then that's, that's Victor video. Right. So how do you get out of being Victor video? You know, there's 10,000 of you, Victor videos. How do I get to be Victor Van Doe or, you know, pick a name, but how do, how do you get yourself out of that? And I think you get yourself out of that because you've committed to doing a great job. You deliver and then you do it again and then you do it again and then you do it again and even if you're an introvert and you're not like social media izing yourself the word's going to get around that victor he's a great camera guy and i don't have to think about anything he comes in he sets up his sticks and he gets the thing and he's a white balance guy and whatever i'm not a video guy i'm just making stuff up but whatever that is that gets you to be the next guy and then you do family feud and then you do family feud the the um the LA edition, and then you get to be on ABC and this thing and that next thing. And you, you just become that on call guy. That's, that's right. where we want to get. We want to get out of the adjective video guy to a guy like Victor to Victor Van Gogh. Right. That's where we want to get. We want to, this is the guy we need. Yeah. Just call Victor, you know, making up names, but, but you get my point. We come out of a persona to an adjective, to a noun, to a proper noun. And when we get to the proper noun, when it's van, we're, we've made it, I guess. Cause then we're getting called, right? Yeah. Well, I think, I think what a lot of uh, production folks in particular often forget is we are really in the customer service business, whether it's church or otherwise, we are, right. our role is actually more customer service than it is technical. Um, our job is to to take care of the things that whoever we're working for doesn't know how to take care of, doesn't want to take care of, um, to make them comfortable in the event that we are producing, um, to make sure if you're in a lead position, to make sure your team is set up for success to produce right. that event. That's all customer service. Right. 
Right. Right. It all goes back to the when the show starts, T minus weeks, months, years before. Right. So the the second before the gig starts is not the time to be rehashing what I should have done three months ago. It may be that day. Yeah. It may be that day. But then the next one, you should have learned, I can't do that again. I have to do blah, 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 blah. Right. So <clears throat> we, we all can have learning moments. And I think we've all maybe not crashed the plane, but we've, we've certainly um, avoided a mission critical uh, condition that may have uh, had an influence on our future employment let's just say, but yeah, for sure, I, I think we all have those aha learning moments and they're going to happen. They are, they're going to happen. And, uh, I, as a TD, I want to know the near misses and I want to know when you've almost crashed the plane. I, in fact, I, I have to know, and I, I would be, I would be mad at my crew or a person if I found out two or three weeks later, that some near miss might have happened or, or did, and they didn't let me know. I'm not going to yell at you, dude. But now I'm kind of mad because you didn't let me know because I'm going to need to change the process because I don't want that to happen again. Was right. it a and scheduling the process, issue? The you process know, it's, may be the reason it, the process exactly. may be the reason it happened. Right. Not, so not and so the person. Sick. I had to find somebody. They didn't know. I didn't know. For some strange reason, you guys flew under the radar and you had a near miss. No, I need to know. I really want to know. Right. I'm going to smile and be happy. And wow, that's great. Crisis avoided. But let's move on because I, I don't want that to happen again. And whatever it is, church or a CEO conference or a rock show or whatever, we just want it to be bread and butter every day. Just get up. Well, and and to become that person that we're talking about, become to become the proper noun, those are all the things you end up having to think about. You have to be able to think about three. You know, we always joke if you're a tech director, you're thinking not what's happening in this, not what's happening right now in this song, but there's two more songs after this. I'm already thinking about that third song. Like, right. What's the transition? Maybe it's the hardest one, and it has the most cues. What's right. the transition? What are we at the? What am I looking for? Am I looking at the lighting? If I am I looking at the lighting operator and she has this look of complete panic on her face, and the queue right now looks great, so I'm thinking, oh, she's thinking about the next queue, which may crash the lighting system apparently because her face looks <laughs> like uh, something really bad. I haven't been happening. told, right? The right, but nobody's communicated it to me, right? Right, and so I need to maybe just slide over there and go. Are you okay with what's happening? What's about to happen next? I mean, do we need to, like, what can I help you with? But if you're not thinking about all those things, you know, that's and and someone who does that, it is is that's that's one of the people that you want, and that's a that's how you get to the proper noun is the. I mean, there's a like a long list of things at Duke, like you said. Um, it's not that you're a, necessarily a great sound engineer, or a great lighting operator. Or, I mean, yes, you have to do those things. You have to, you have to be good at your job, but it's all the other stuff <laughs> that, that all the pre-planning and the kind of being and, self-aware and, and of what's happening. you're a leader or tech and being like the first one to raise your hand of that you made an error or you, it's, it's okay. I'd rather, I'd rather you be honest and say, whoops, I did that then the, I have to forensically go back and find out that it ultimately was you and the gear was fine. So just like accept the foul. I had a 30 second moment. I was doing a, a show and there was uh, going to be video playback. And this very one was going to be uh, also being recorded uh, so that they could take this. Um, it was a live event, but they could take this uh, event with video um back and and reshow it on their podcast or, or rebroadcast it or or something and we had done this event before with a different video person and a different uh, set of gear and um the short story of it is we had made a patching change between this city and this city and we were just about ready to come up on it and because we had made this patching change uh, i I looked at the console and I told the stage manager, I go, we got to stall for a minute. 
because if I'd have rolled into record and we would have potted that up, I was going to get an internal feedback loop. And it just hit me right then. We had done this different than Miami. Uh oh. And I'm like, give me one minute. And I'm like, Jonathan, we can't do this this way. Give me one second. I'm going to repatch. Hold on. We did it. And I go, I confidence. Yep. Do tone. Great. I go, okay, now we're good. And so they were able to vamp through it, whatever. But that was my whoops. Yep. It's not how we did it in Miami. It's how we did it in Santa Monica. Whoops. Hey. And everybody was tickled to death. I was having a heart attack inside <laughs> the TD and the production company and the stage manager was like, Hey, great call, man. Good job. You know? Yeah. I should have thought about that on Tuesday. Whoops. Well, I think I different think, team, different group, you know, if you, well, big thing for me was tell me what happened. I'm not going to get upset. We had to do, you had like 65 cues. Things happened. We had one rehearsal right. that was 65 right. cues. Nobody's right. perfect. Tell me what happened so we can fix it. And then when the pastor comes to me or the person that hired us says, Hey, what happened on this? Me as the TD, I'm going to use, and you said this the other night, I'm going to take responsibility for it. I'm not throwing my team. I'm not throwing my sound engineer under the bus. I'm going to say, right. that was my fault. We fixed, here's how we fixed it. It won't happen again. We you got know. your back. Yeah. Yeah. We're here for you, man, because it is a service. Duke, it is a service thing. It's all about you, man. I'm going to make it right. We got you. We got your back. We we had a near miss there, but we got your back. Well, and if you protect your people, um, they will they will be honest with you and they will be loyal to you. Right. And I don't mean protecting your people from bad management. I'm just saying prote protecting your people as in, if you tell me the truth and tell me what, what happened, I will take the bullet and we will move right. on and we'll, you know, and everything will be fine because I, as the guy, I already have a lot of chips in the game with the people that hired as the tech director. That's how, why I'm the tech director. Right. So I can, if I have to give them a chip in the game every once in a while, I, I'm, I can do that because I've acquired those. Right. And to the TD predicting their people, there is a time there is a time that somebody might need some time off that, that you might have to give them some time to reflect because it's not, it's not your decision of what they did. It is their decision on what they did. And I, I have no time for uh, safety infractions. So especially if somebody's going high overhead in a sit harness and whatever, and you don't follow the OSHA safety whatever you have put into place with your, um, your insurance company or whatever you have to do to get those, um, people trained to do whatever they do and they choose to not do what they do. Did you not choose to do the right thing because you were being arrogant and you didn't care or did you forget both are bad, but I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to coach you two different ways, but you're going to have some time off to think about that. Because I can't have you being a safety risk for all the rest, right? So sorry, we went down that rabbit hole a little bit. But there, there is a time, there is a time that somebody needs to reflect on their behavior or lack of um, of uh, confidence within the team. Sorry, as I try to put that in corporate speak, but uh, it's not all just you know, hey, yeah, we'll get them next time, you know, because hanging on a sit harness when something screwed up is not the time to go, Hey, we'll get them next time. I'm glad you're alive. Now let's figure out why <laughs> that happened. Right. And probably somebody's going to get some time off. Accidents well, happen. Accidents happen, but they shouldn't by the way, you know? Well, and some, and I think on the, the whole time off thing, I, uh, to flip that into a, a different, a little bit different Avenue is, is there's a lot of burnout in this business in, in what we do. Right. People get fried. They just, they're working all the time. They're, they're not taking care of themselves. Um, and they get, and then that's when dumb safe, like even dumb safety things happen and dumb things in the show happen because people right. are just tired. They're they They may, they may have gotten 10 hours of sleep the night before, but they're just exhausted up here. Uh, yeah, know, just, they, they just need, they need a break and they need some rejuvenation and, and being able to, 
understand that, uh, you know, and then understand it in yourself. There's no way for you to get to be the proper noun uh, by being burned out all the time. I think right. the important part is, is you, right? Let's just bring yeah, it all back yeah. to, I needed yeah. you. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Well, lots of, uh, lots of really good stuff, uh, in this podcast. I think, uh, as, as we kind of started off with, it's, uh, it's one of those things where we, we all need to be, um, we all need to do this thing with a great dose of humility, but we also, our organizations need us as individuals to be healthy, happy in our best selves. Um, and, uh, uh, hopefully you can take away a lot of good practical ways to maybe do more of that, uh, through, uh, this episode with Dave. So Dave, we're, uh, super thankful, man. Thankful for your time. Um, I know you, uh, no, enjoy it. It was a great platform and thanks for having me. I totally appreciate it. And, very, very and cool. as we said on the last podcast, Dave is available for bar mitzvahs and speaking engagements and country, <laughs> country, country bands. Uh, he's an audio engineer. He's a speaker. He's a drummer. He's a, marketing manager he's a tech director but wait he's, more. Oh, yeah. he's, he's so many things um but if you want to have if you want to talk uh if you want to uh, find out more about dave or how dave can help you you can just go to davehatmaker.com we'll put that in the show notes and uh it's one not one of the he's not one of those guys that says oh i'll help you and won't help you he actually he actually loves helping folks and and mm. doing stuff that's one of the reasons i i, I like him so much uh, be, We've been friends for a very long time. I, we were trying to figure out the other night how long <laughs> we've known each other. <laughs> 40 lots. Yeah. Cool. It was a Yamaha um, training uh, thing some many decades ago. Just <laughs> where I think we first met. So that's there you go. It was all analog. There that's all I know. <laughs> Just last week, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> there you go. So, well, thank you. Yeah. Well, so thank please, you have listening, everybody. Uh, yeah, I'm going to steal Duke's Thunder. Please like and subscribe. Uh, it does help me. I like it. It makes me happy. Um, it does. Amazingly, 60% uh, of all the people that watch this are not subscribed. So, uh, yes, I can Ding see bell. that. Ding. I can see into your soul, and 60% <laughs> of you are not subscribed. So, you need to subscribe. So, anyway. Wow. Well, with that, we better leave before we get into trouble. Thanks for watching and listening. All right. See you guys later.